This is Steve Young for the Code Roundtable. It's early January, um, sun is shining, we haven't had much snow, and it leads me to think about, you know, what you see is not always what's real, or what's f important, what we see is no snow, um, but, but what's real, what's important, it's cold out there. Uh, snow is nice, but snow also has its problems uh, with transportation, with poor people, with the homeless, things like that. We've been, uh, this past year, uh, at the co-roundtable and various roundtables and other things, thinking about the intangible versus the tangible. The tangible is this. I can, I can knock at a table, you can hear the sound. The intangible is my saying, a tree has just fallen in the forest. Did you hear a sound? No. But I'm sure in your mind you would, you would have some sense of a sound of a tree falling down, crack, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm particularly concerned about are the importance of what we call intangible assets, social capital and human capital. And I think they're called intangible, it's a complicated reason, but it goes back to our accounting practices, which as I understand it, go back to the 1300s in Italy. Um, the concept of a balance sheet. Uh, what do you put on a balance sheet? Well, you put assets. Well, what assets? Tangible assets, because you can put your hands on them money in the bank, a, a, a legal document that you can collect money, or, or a legal document where you have to pay money out, even and if you die, your estate has to honor that, that contract. Uh, you have land, you have houses, you have real property, it's all tangible assets. We put it in the balance sheet. What about your personality? What about your ethics? What about your skills? What about, suppose you are the greatest violin player of your era? And, and you can make a lot of money playing the violin. Does that go in your balance sheet? I don't think so. Your income that you actually earn might, but this other aspect. Well, if I want to get to know you, isn't it important for me to kind of put some perspective on this skill, this talent, this genius that you have of, of being able to play a violin or run, a, run an algorithm in today's computer or listen to people and, and, and understand them and get them to work, get them to, to commit themselves. Um, if you're a judge, uh, fairness, being able to listen to both sides, that's an asset, that's a skill. Not every judge has that. So what do we do with these kinds of assets? Well, there were two things in the business scene in America past year, which I think focus this. Um, the first is, is the Disney company. Um, roughly speaking, and, and this is very controversial, um, it was, it's felt by many Americans that Disney as a company decided to go in a particular direction of cultural values and beliefs and political values and beliefs which go under the name of woke or wokeness, which goes to the kind of characters they show, the storylines they show, et cetera, et cetera. So in short, Disney made a number of movies and other things which reflected this woke point of view and audiences didn't show up. And so Disney lost money, it got weak, and as a result, other investors have decided to start a proxy fight in order to, take, to have power on the board of Disney to change its business model away from wokeness in a direction that they believe will make more money. Now, what's at the heart of this issue? Is it not estimating an intangible? what the customers want. I would argue that there are two different evaluations of customer perception, of customer value. What's the value added of Disney? For one group of people, it's, it's con confirming my sense of wokeness. For another group of people, it's I, re I revile against this, this concept of wokeness. Well, where, where in the books of Disney do, do numbers show up, the number, financial numbers that, that people in business really like to use to make decisions? An old-fashioned concept I would throw out to you is, is the concept of patronage. What's, what's the probability of patronage to Disney of product A and product B? Could you not have some sort of focus group survey, something like that, of, of different customer tastes? Uh, you know, some people like cold beer, a few people like warm beer, not very many, but there are some. You might be able to sell some warm beer to some people. 
but which which market, which which is driven by intangible taste, values, all kinds of things, situations, which market is the one that you can you can de design a successful business to meet? So that's the customer stakeholder side. Where does that where do customers show up in your balance sheet? Next. There's open AI. You may have heard this. So there was a, a, a fight, open AI, and they've come up with ChatGPT, a really sort of intriguing search engine, if you ask me, uh, coming up with words. Uh, if you ask it a question, you make a comment, it'll reach out to all kinds of other words, pull them together, and give them back to you. And uh, the CEO and sort of founder was, was fired by, by the board. And within two days of this, I think, 700 of the 750 employees submitted, in effect, a threat, a demand on the company, reinstate the CEO or will leave. Now, if, and so the board crumbled and reinstated the CEO. Why? Because the company needs employees. Those employees, the human capital of those employees, coming together as a social capital was absolutely essential to that company. If it, if it went to the market and raised another $100 million and had no employees, it would still be a failure. So where do the employees show up on the balance sheet? They don't. 